Caribbean encrusted hard boiled eggs with a walnut and basil crumb served with a chili, tomato and onion jam. Oh, sunny, that sounds effing delicious. But surely that's too advanced for me to attempt at home myself. Well, think again. This is probably a dish you've never tried before, but after trying this once, I'll bet it becomes one of your go-to dishes and a new family favorite. If you're on a low carb, high protein diet, then this is definitely a recipe that you'll want to keep in mind. All you need is eggs, tomato and onion, and of course, a few nuts. I find the waxy texture of walnuts incredibly satisfying, but you can use cashews, pistachios, peanuts, almonds, or whatever you have laying in the pantry. If you don't have any nuts, don't worry. This recipe works just as well without them. You'll lose the element of texture, which you can replace with some homemade croutons using toasted bread. Let's start by boiling our eggs. Quick tip when boiling eggs, always make sure to add the eggs to cold, water and bring the water up to the boil. If you add the eggs to hot or boiling water they will crack while cooking and part of the egg whites will seep into the water. This has happened to us all on at least one occasion and it's never pleasant. Moving on to our other ingredients, finely slice a small red onion. If you don't have red onion go ahead and use a standard white onion. Make sure to give this a nice fine dice before placing in a bowl for later and then moving on to our tomatoes. I'm using cherry tomatoes because they're sweeter than the standard ones. Remember, we're creating a jam, so chop your tomatoes up finely. Then we go in with a chili. This is optional, but recommended. If you're not a fan of spice, then go ahead and remove the seeds. This will eliminate the heat, but you'll still get that fragrant peppery flavor. Always make sure to wash your hands after chopping your chili. I'm adding in some fresh basil, but you can add whatever herbs you have handy, be it parsley, coriander, mint, or if you prefer, feel free to add some dried herbs. Dried oregano or Italian herbs work perfectly with this dish too. Finally, let's get a handful of our nuts and run our knife through them. Again, this should be a nice fine chop, but keep in mind that the nuts will provide the dish with texture, so feel free to leave some chunky. Right, let's get our pan on a nice high heat. We're looking to start by creating a deep, rich, sweet, jammy chutney. So we need a generous drizzle of olive oil, about two tablespoons. Throw in your diced onions, leaving none behind. Followed by your tomatoes and chili. And let's get a nice saute going before adding in our seasoning. I'm going in with a generous pinch of salt and pepper, as well as about half a teaspoon of granulated garlic. This stuff is an absolute godsend on busy weekdays and an essential to keep in the pantry at all times. Whatever you do, don't grab one of these small shakers from your local supermarket. Instead, take a trip down to Costco and for a few quid more, you can pick up one of these big bottles that never seem to run out. Costco, if you're watching, I am available for sponsorship. Right, the idea with this saute is to reduce 80% of the water content from the onion and tomato, which is why we're keeping this on a high flame. You'll be tempted to move the ingredients around, but be patient and leave it alone. That's easier said than done, but once you simply can't wait any longer, go ahead and give your ingredients a toss, but make sure to see there's some color on the edges before doing so. This is exactly what we're looking for. Take a look at the consistency. Is it jammy? If so, go ahead and add your nut crumb. Keep sauteing on a nice high heat before adding about a tablespoon of apple cider vinegar or any vinegar will do. Give your saute another minute or so before taking off the heat and adding in your fresh herbs. You've now successfully prepared a jammy walnut crumb topping that tastes absolutely sensational. Have a taste and add some seasoning if required and then place this to one side and let's move on to our eggs. Okay, our eggs have been boiling for about 10 minutes. Quick tip for when peeling eggs, always run them under cold water once they're cooked. This stops the cooking process so your eggs won't get overcooked and rubbery, but also cracking the eggs in the cold water makes them so much easier to peel. The water seeps in between the shell and the egg and the peel just slides straight off. Moving on to my legendary crusting method. Step one, spread your seasoning of choice generously onto a plate or any flat surface. Slice your eggs in halves and dunk and shake. Okay, the idea here is to ensure that you have as much of the surface area coated with the seasoning as possible. Keep a knife handy to help keep those cheeky yolks in place. Some of those suckers will try to escape if they do, don't worry, just pop them straight back in. Place a non-stick pan on a medium heat with a drizzle of olive oil or any vegetable oil will do. Lay your eggs yolk side down and give them about 60 seconds. The idea is that they develop a nice crust and char. That slightly charred crust is intense flavor and that's exactly what we want. Guys, be careful, the eggs have a tendency to spit, which is never pleasant. We want to avoid using tongs and be as gentle as possible when flipping these over as these cheeky yolks might try and escape. I find the tip of a knife works best. Right, we're almost ready to eat. 
plate up your eggs yolk side up and I'm using a plate to make it look rather refined. However, feel free to use a bowl and spoon and dig straight in. Then let's generously pour over our jammy crumb mixture. I'm scattering it around the plate, but you can place your crumb topping on top of the egg, which also works well too. Hey, look at that. Doesn't that look refined? Not bad for a few eggs on a Monday night, hey? I bet you feel pretty effing proud of yourself, don't you? Well, take a pic and post it on your socials and tag Sunny's Effing Delicious. I enjoy the simplicity of this dish as well as its versatility. It can be a delicious weekend breakfast or brunch, as well as a midweek low-carb, high-protein dinner. Want to reduce your carb intake? Then give this recipe a try and let us know your thoughts in the comments below. Thank you for watching and I'll see you guys tomorrow for another effing delicious recipe.